Hi, I'm Jason Bridge, Max Mr. Tools. Welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the basic mainstones of your workshop, your hand plane. Now, I know from working in the stores, going to the shows, we do three different ranges of hand planes. Three different manufacturers. And I've people come in and go, what do I buy? Um, 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 it's be quite confusing. If you've never picked up a plane before and you're not sure what to buy, I'll be really stuck. Um, I know we're walking into the stores looking at all these planes. Which one? What does what? Why? Do they have different uses? Yeah, they do. So we're going to answer some of those questions this afternoon. We're not going to get everything done. With lots of things like the sharpening, how they go together, we're going to do that in the following weeks. So today it's really about giving you a little bit of a basic knowledge of what you're looking at, what they do. This plane really, I'm going to pick up, let's get into this. All right, the number four. Planes are numbered, okay? So this is a smoother number four. You can go smaller, but number four is probably the most common. Weirdly, when we buy a plane or people come into the store, they seem to think this is what they want. And I've often asked that question, why? Why do you want that? Most common answer we seem to get? My dad's got one. And your dad wasn't wrong, is it? So you're always going to go and buy what your dad possibly had. Sadly, no, if you gave me an option, I'd go with something just a little bit bigger. So we said number four. If we go four and a half, I'm going to show you a comparative now. Four and a half, a bit bigger, a little bit heavier. Okay, that showed nicely on the camera, so it's a bit wider. This has got a two inch blade, two and three eighths. It's also a bit higher, a bit beefier, a bit heavier. Heavier planes, why? Heavier plane means actually you've got momentum to keep it driving. So the weight you can use to keep things operating, keep it pushing down, puts weight on the workpiece, helps you actually do the cut if you like. But you've got to be able to control it. So if a plane's too heavy, it's going to be difficult to control. So we're going to put these back on the bench. We'll get you to pan along in a minute and have a look. Different sizes give you an idea what the range is, the basic range of hand planes. So we've already said, we started over far side, number four. There are smaller planes, go three, two and one, but they're not as common. So four, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, seven. Then you come up to eight. Now I'm hoping you're getting an idea of the scale of this now because number eight, pretty long, pretty massive. Okay, and again we already said these have names, so triplane, right, so there to there, six, four plane, five, jack plane, jack of all trades, four, four and a half, the smoothest, so those names relate possibly to what they were used for, and if you go back through the history books, these have been about for about 150 years old, they were developed by a guy, Leonard Bailey, he sold the rights to Stanley, they came out with this. Lots of planes have developed from there. But the basics are exactly the same. Okay? So, let's just take our four again. I'm going to put the pencil in under there. Keep it off the bench. Things come apart. And again, you can get blinded by names on this. So we have toe, heel, handle, knob. Cap iron, blade and chip breaker. Now we've got the blade out, just going to move the pencil. Hopefully, we'll see all this still. Okay. In here, we've got the frog. Adjustment winder, lateral movement. So there's lots of different components in your plane, and then it's, if you're familiar with all those components, it can make it quite scary. People start going on about different things you wouldn't possibly know. Next thing we can do, let's just have our blade and we're going to go over different things like the sharpening on this style of plane. Let's undo this. We have our chip breaker and blade. So we have our blade, the chip breaker. These two come together. I'm going to quickly just put them back together nice and near the front finger tight, turn it over, need to do this back up, 
So, plain screwdriver knob's really good for this. Better than a big screwdriver that you slip with. So, nicely to hold, gets in there. We've got small amount on here. Millimetre, two millimetres maximum. Chip breaker is on the top, blade is underneath. This down the plane, and the blade goes in, is beveled down. So the blade is there, cutting edge, the bevel goes in. The screw has to locate inside to there. Okay, gently in. Locate it on the lateral movement. This allows us to move left or right. If we can bring it back to centre. Drop it on. Okay, do it up. Now, when we do this up, how much tension? I don't want loads, I haven't got to fight it. Plenty, okay? Just gonna check where we are, gonna bring that back. So, we're back in our line. So what do you go with as a plane? Shorter planes, what do they do? Smoother, they will rough the surface down quicker. So the thaw's really good for that. The wider blade of the four and a half makes things quicker again, because you've got more surface contact area. So they smooth that board down. But what won't they do as well? Won't help you get a straight line. So if you're trying to join a tabletop or two boards together, we'll do it in a minute as a demo, you want something longer. Help produce that straight line. The old fashioned carpenters used to have a mixture of different planes, something small to rough down with, you've got bigger to do particular tasks. So if we get a piece of timber up on the bench just for a second, see if we can bring the video camera back just a little bit. Let's see if we try and show you this. Now I might have to tilt this up a little bit. We go with a four, and I've got a bad piece of ash here. You can see we get this gap, okay? So we can see how this rocks. So if we're trying to plane this with a short plane, we're gonna follow the curve of this board. If we wanna get it flatter, would be better going something slightly longer. So a five, the longer length gives you more stability. We'll also bridge across that hollow, so therefore you get something straighter. It might take a bit longer. By having the wider mass and the heavier weight helps produce momentum to keep it moving. But as I said, you've got to be able to control that when you're operating it. So some of the ladies, hopefully if you're watching this, really important that you try and what weight is it? How is it going to function? How heavy is it? So a five and a half might be too heavy, you come down to a five. Okay. All you're reducing really there is the width. But that mass is quite important. These are all cast iron, high ductile iron. So it doesn't corrode, doesn't rust as easily. It helps keep things straighter, absorbs the knocks and the bumps a little bit. So if you drop it, hopefully it will bounce a bit more, shouldn't break. Old fashioned planes were cast iron. So more modern planes, definitely a bit more absorbing for that. Um, let's see if we can bring our bit of wood down again. Probably just a pan round just a little bit. We're just gonna clamp this in. So let's have a go with our four a minute. So I'll gently wind the blade up, just setting up. Short piece of wood behind your crag. There they are, okay? Just one, okay? I'm gonna set the blade up. I've seen these guys, now this is interesting, they turn it around, they try and wind this forward, and they're sort of, oh, what have I got? Looking, sighting down the plane. Can be so much easier with this. Take your plane, gonna turn it around. We know we've got the adjuster down in here, winds things forward, short piece of offcut. Test it, nothing happening. Now, I know we're gonna do a heaviest cut if we want with this, but if you wanna set this up nice and light, you wanna know where you're cutting, great way of doing it. So short piece, cut in there, not the other side. So I need to move the lateral movement. If I move it one way, heavier cut, nothing the other side, so pull it back. So you get used to which way your lateral moves, how it's adjusting the blade. So we've moved it back again. We wanna get that more equal. Again, we can wind cut back, and wind it forward. There's a little bit of backlash on any plane to allow it to move. So this wheel here goes there. Seems like quite a bit of play. You'll get used to that. If you're gonna do a cut, wind the backlash down so it's pushing forward. So you, you can't jump the blade back when you start cutting, so we're up to there. 
Another good little tip, which I haven't got at the moment, a bit of candle wax can be really good. Help things glide. While playing, we can put it down. Now we know on this board, let's just check the Clampton. On here, we can stir, nothing happening. I could come forward just a little bit. Most people wind in too much. Now you might think we're not doing very much. We're actually knocking off little high spots. And I know this bit of ash has got a lot of twist. Why we picked it up for this? Now if I want to flat this, I can work diagonally, I can work across it. Now this is taking off the high spots nicely. Other weird thing that customers go, yeah, but it's not taking a lot. No, and I'm not sweating though. So if I actually want to control this, if I wind it forward lots, I've got to oh, push a lot more. Momentum becomes more of a challenge. I can do something a bit heavier. You can see it's cutting nicely. Next other important thing, we're getting these nice big shavings, look. My body stance is quite important for this as well. Feet action, so Craig's just going to zoom you back a little bit so we can try and have a look. I've watched people when we do the teaching sessions with us, they've got to have their feet together, or well, they're totally wrong place to stand. You've got to be able to get in here. My left foot, because I'm right handed, goes there. Hand goes across the top, push down. So I can actually use my weight above the plane in reality to push it down. We're still cutting. Okay, so we're working back, we're flattening this off. We could check it by putting the plane across. I can sight it. I know there's a lot to go on this. Okay. Now that was on a four. I'm just going to change planes a minute. I'm going to come up to a five. Five and a half. Slightly bigger. I know on here. Just got our cut. I'm going to bring it forward again. Now this has got a bit more mass to it. A bit more weight. So therefore I can use the momentum. Going. Working cross a bit more diagonal will help flatten things off quickly. Keep going. So hopefully now you're starting to see we can flatten something quite quickly. Difficult to see plus be from there. I've actually got a nice flat bit there to give you an idea of this bit of board. Something I normally use when we're doing machining class. Got an immense amount of wobble. Okay, twist in every which way. Best thing I could find is try and show you how you can level something back. What's quite astounding with this, everything that was made 200 years ago, furniture and everything, it's all hand plane. So we started short plane, it will help us knock off the waste quickly, but we want to get it flatter, we need to go something longer. So that leads nicely to, look at these. I want to join them. I've drawn a couple of arrows on this, so I know where we want to be. Going to put them together. So for this, I'm going to put them in the vise. So they're going to go over there. So gently, Craig's going to swing himself back a little bit. We're going to drop them down into here for us. Okay. Just going to level them up with my fingertips. Need to come up out the vise a little bit. Check where things are. Now we're plating the two together. Even if we're able to square a little bit along the length, as the two come together and we've done it like a book, they open up, it will match the same angle, which is great, makes it easier. The other advantage with doing the two, it makes it more stable because you have a wider area to sit on. If it's one board, we're going to wiggle along. So two gives you a bigger surface area to sit. If we go short plane, number four, if this board is slightly hollow up and down, it will follow that contour. It will make it difficult to get two straight edges to join together. So if we go something bigger, where should we go? Up to the eight, big plane. Check what's happening, nothing cutting yet. Now I know with this, I've wound them, set them up a little bit, bring it forward, all the way through. Now this takes a bit more control. I have to concentrate, using my hand, all the way up through. 
my body stance changed a bit. I've got enough angle so I can actually work with my feet, change my weight, follow the cut all the way through. When I start the cut, so right down here, putting pressure with my right hand, with my left hand, now my right hand's coming in, we push along, keep the pressure, relax my left hand, follow through with the right, trying to keep the straightness of the back of the sole, so we keep it nice and straight. We've got a shaving all the way along now, nice and clean. I can feel on here, this is good. We do have in the middle here, a bit I haven't quite got. Again, pencil can be good. So let's go to there, back on again. Follow through. Still got a little bit of pencil. I can even feel that looks rougher. This is smooth. There's one thing you can't beat with hand play. The noise and the finish. Abrasive paper, machine planer, doesn't give you this. Okay, hopefully, putting back in our line. Now by using that long plane, we bridged across this surface, that's helping it keep it nice and straight. As we said, something smaller can be more difficult to get a straight edge. So hopefully, we should, um, we should be able to get something nice and clean all the way along. Now if I can help Craig a bit, let's just do... Okay. They would go up really nicely now. Now, this is a machined edge, machine thicknesser. This almost looks a bit shinier. Okay, I don't know if you can get more of a reflection off there, but that totally different feel. Okay, so that will give us a finish. Well, like I said, by putting the two together, a lot more stable, made it controllable for that long plane. Helped control that weight for me as well, so I didn't have to struggle. So that's a really good tip. So when we put them together, really easy to do. So I'll put those back out of the way for a second. Next little thing, which we possibly could have done earlier, but confuses some people. Timber has a grain. Depending on how it's cut and prepared, when we get it, you have fibres. Get these nice long lines. I've deliberately picked this out to try and find something where we can follow the lines. If we cut the wrong way, so we start at this end and we're cutting in, the fibres want to fold up, they curl over. We want to push them and have support pushing them down on what is underneath. So let's go the wrong way then. The downside of what I'm doing now, most of what I've got on the bench here is nice and sharp. And five. Haven't used too much, going to bring it up. This will still cut. Taking a slightly heavier cut. One more. So we, as we said, this is going against the grain. We're not going to adjust the plane, we're going to leave it there. We're taking a relatively thick shaving. I think it's a thick shaving anyway, okay? Um, down through here, let's see where Craig is. Can you see this little white fleck on here on the camera, Craig? Hopefully you got, all right, let's have a look. All right. So there's a little bit of tear in here. I can see it nicely. That's because we've actually going against those grain fibers. We're going to turn it round. So put it back in the vise. The fibers now are coming up outwards. So as we cut them, we're going to push them down onto what's underneath. We haven't adjusted anything. Push down, I can follow through. And I know this is real basic stuff for some of us. You've never used a plane before. This is a whole new experience. Hopefully, very different finish. Very difficult to go over on a point, but that feels a lot smoother. So by cutting the correct way makes a difference. We said something is a heavy cut. It's producing a nice shaving. Everything's working properly. Gonna bring the winder back a little bit, come back up. See if we've reduced it very a little bit. Nothing, good. Forward a tiny bit. So we adjust the winder. 
don't need to move too much. Light little shaving now. Now the latch we've got in the vise, quite a coarse material, softwood. Lovely fine shaving, okay. Almost like a lace, okay. Real fine. We can probably get a little bit finer. Other weird thing though, we're watching students. They've done a lovely fine cut. We get it set up, they drop it. Now we didn't adjust anything. We drop the plane on the piece of wood, you make the blade jump forward slightly. So we've got to go back a stage now. So we're going to wind this back, come forward. So it's that little bit of care, if you like, of when you present. Don't drop it on, you land it. That's a bad way of phrasing it, but it's a plane. We land it gently, you'll get better finish. Okay, you won't jump the blade forward. We go up our line again, we go to R8. I'm gonna struggle with this. I've got all this weight on the back end now, trying to support, and there, uh, I can manage. Some of this is experience, if you like, and technique. I've got to control it a lot more. Especially when I get to here, the risk is I fall off the end. So, the selection's quite important on where you go. Things that play a part in it, what you're trying to do. So something shorter will rough the board down quickly. Something longer will give you a straight edge and a better finish long term to get it dead parallel, straight. Nice smooth surface and flat. True, if you like. So, they all play a part. Normally if I'm roughing something out, get out my four, take off the waste bits quickly. Quick to control, not too much weight, not too heavy to do. Then I go up a plane, maybe up to a six, seven. Use that, especially if it's a bigger board. To join tabletops, definitely my seven. Something longer, makes it easier to do. So, we've looked at bigger planes, standard bench planes, all right? They are all bevel down. The blade in reality is upside down. You have a chip breaker. So let's move our bit of lurch. We then have things like block points. So we'll move these round to here, make it easier so you can see. Again, different manufacturers, different makes, lots of different block points. They even vary slightly. So on here, we can turn these round. Let's have that to there. I'm going to hold these and try and show you what we're looking at. Now on here, the blade is down in here. Okay. The one over, slightly different angle, steeper. Okay. So we'll bring it round, so blade is lower. Okay. Now we haven't mentioned anything so far, a blade angle. It's something as we go through a series of different videos we're going to do, going to be a lot more in depth. On the standard bench planes we've used, they were all a 45 degree set angle. The frog, what the blade is mounted on. The blade is then sharpened to a 30 degree bevel. On here, this will be a 12, 13 and a half degree off the bottom to where the blade is. On the one we looked at after, this is 20 degrees, slightly higher. So they have slightly different uses. This is actually better for end grain. This will give you a bit more all round use. The lower angle, if you use it side grain, can tend to split the fibres a bit more. So you need to be light with how much cut you take. Too heavy a cut can tear the fibres. So lower angle, better for end grain. Block planes were originally designed, if you in reality, their name applies for actually preparing butcher's blocks, cutting surfaces. All end grain little bits of beach, so this was used to slice the end, clean it up. So, different sizes again, you get slightly wider. We get different angles, okay? So, the Veritas one, slightly lower angle. So this is a 12 degree bed, this is a 20. The nice thing with your block pane, they're a single handed thing, fit in the palm of your hand, I even used to actually, when I used to work, we used to fit kitchens, I'd have one of these in my pocket. I'd walk around, occasionally it was there, always needed, okay? We've got our adjuster, our cap on here, we can take off, our blade. Now this is different than what we've looked at on the bigger planes. 
single blade, one piece of metal. There's no chip breaker on the back. It's bevel up, so it drops into the plane, has a location. Some of these have lateral movement. You have your winder back together. Tension, it's brass knob on here. This winder. One thing I know from experience on here, a lot of people overdo this one. Bring that too much, undo the screw too much, we've got to wind everything up further on the back. Causes more problems, doesn't apply the pressure like you want, so we're just going to bring that back, screw this back down. Still a bit too much, I could actually wind it over a little bit. That's better. Okay, so we got that. Same thing as we did before, if we can turn it over. We take the blade out. I want to check my set now. Our little block. I'm cutting left hand side, nothing right. So this gives me a way of checking, see where I'm cutting, what I'm cutting. Just tension it up. So, got a block plane. Let's just move these about again. We're going to put a piece of wooden device. We'll just sit up. About there. Okay. So, in reality, let's move a few things about. Got a piece of pine. We want to plane the end grain. Going to come across. At the moment, I've got to wind the blade forward. If you come across here, the fibres now. If we're cutting end grain, the grain is running upwards. Planning with the grain's easier, end grain's harder to do and harder to control. The risk of going across here, we break the fibres out on the back edge. We splinter them off. So we want to make sure that we can control that a little bit more. We could have something, and this is the, one of the easiest ways, put something on the back. So here, I'm going to use one of these, hopefully. Over there, tension. Got to move my bit of wood down. I'm going to turn it around so you can see where we are on the set. So we've got our clamp. We, in reality, fixed on a scrap piece of wood on the back. Just going to do that up. Bit heavy, it's come back a bit. So we want to plane across here, gently coming forward. For the advantage of using the little block, we've set it up for a nice light cut. Instead of doing the normal scenario, especially when I've watched the students, it goes straight into a heavy cut. Won't move. Hard work. So let's bring it back down again. We could check it. You can also see what it does to the fibre, it's too heavy. Tiny bit. So this is what this little plane is really designed to do. So we said we can use single handed, we can put a finger on the top. I oh, got so used to doing there, I run this hand, as it go up. Got things nice and square. So we're coming across there, just trying to clean up the bit we messed up on the front. So the nice thing with this is, we cut the surfaces nice and clean, we've got a little bit we get there where we know we hit it hard. Got no splintering on the back. Nice and cleanly done. So let's just take our clamp back off. All because we put that protected rail on. So nice and clean. No chips. This is chipped out, but, but we expected that. That's what that's doing. That's just protecting that edge. Quick and simple tip. Really easy to do. So you block playing lower angle. Not as high as we said. We are. We've got different sizes. All of the planes, reality we've got on the bench, nothing there is actually new as a design. It's been about possibly 100, 150 years ago. Things have been tweaked, altered, manufacturing techniques have changed, materials have changed. But the basics are pretty much the same. Next plane we kind of have. Low angle smoother. Okay. Again, three different brands. We're going to go through different brands and show you benefits again, coming videos. 
but we've got three different brands. This in reality, I'm just going to give myself some room. This is that. This is a big version of a block plane. Okay, so we have that, that bit there. Okay, so we have, I'm going to take it apart and show you. So, as we said, this is low angle smoother. So, in reality, similar length to our number five, similar size. So that's where the name smoother comes from. Low angle, a lot easier to do. So our chip breaker is there. Our blade, there. There's no frog, okay, so they've got those two. Uh, a lot more basic in setup. So it can be easier for some people to set up. The other nice thing with this, less components, Less frustrating now. I've had people regularly come and do courses where they brought their plane into tune up and the blade and everything is all set up the wrong way around. This is bevel down, they come with bevel up, they've got the chip break in the wrong place, they can't get this wrong with this. So, other thing with these, a bit like your little block plane, we've got adjustable mouth. We can open and close the mouth depending on how thick the shaving is. Again, when we go through other videos, we're going to explain the function of that a lot more. So, I put that down, our blade. A lot thicker. That's about absorbing the vibration. That can go in and chop. Okay. So we could do exactly the same thing we did with this. We could plane the end grain. This is actually a bit bigger. Now if you were doing something like a tabletop, you stood it up in the vice, it'd be worth having a piece of wood on the back. Other thing we can do, now probably I'm going to creep right down here. Right place. Don't have that. That will work. A bit of lurch. Our plane. We have simple shooting board set up. Now with this being low angle, we've got backstop. So we present it at 90 degrees. This is really basic as a setup, but it allows me to shoot. Get a nice square corner. We've actually a cut surface. So that'll give me nice clean fibre. Got a little bit of a scratch line, so let's have a look. Anything on there? But hopefully you can see that looks nice and clean. This is a softwood. If I cut this on a table so I, I guarantee I'll probably get more tear out marks than what we got off the plane. So it gives us a nice clean area. Back in, give you an idea of what's going on. Look where the hand goes, right up here. Now we could even go with number five. Let's have a go on, Craig, pass me down. Five, five and a half will work through three, okay? So even the five we could use on here. Move that along. This takes more effort. It takes a little bit more momentum to keep it cutting. The blade's set slightly higher. Must be slightly coarser cut. Major thing I noticed, more effort to push it through. So I need to push harder. Maybe the blade's set a bit heavier. But that's given me a bit more control. So, your low angle smooth is great for that end grain stuff. We could put it back in the vice in a minute. We could easily paint up something down the grain. It'll do a bit of everything. If you think about that pretty comparative size, you can see the difference in the blade angle, how it's set up. A little bit confusing, like I said, when you first walk in of what do you want to go and buy as a plane? If I was going to go and buy myself a new plane, something as a number five, something as a block plane, if I get into this and want something longer, yes, you go triplane, fourplane, those longer lengths, seven and eight. Low angle smoother. Um, seems to be my plane to go for when I'm at home. And I will say that I've even been here and I've been doing stuff with this. I've got Lionel one, Veritas one, we've got Ryder one. 
It's a little bit embarrassing when you're playing in the paint off a door with a 250 pound plane. But isn't that what it's made for? Made to do those sort of tasks. So hopefully you've got a bit of an idea. Now if you live near any of the shops, or when we go and do the shows, pick it up if you can, have a feel. Nothing better than seeing if it works. Feel how it feels. It should feel balanced in your hand, not too heavy, not too weighty. That's really important, the fact that you feel comfortable using it. So hopefully that's given you a brief insight into what different planes do. It's a, a minefield in area. I, you know, I'm quite fortunate I've done this since I was 12, 13 years old. I've got an idea of what I want to go and pick up, why. And I do know we're doing shows. Oh, well, people come over and they're almost... Which one? Um, 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 why? So hopefully that's answered a few of those questions. If you've got questions about this, email them in. We'll answer them, OK? Next week we're going to do a little bit of plane maintenance. So cleaning, how are you keeping up to there? We're going to cover things like sharpening and things as we go through because sharpening's a minefield of an area. Not just hand planes, shizzles, all of those little things. Okay? So thanks for watching. See you next week at 4pm.